is my, I call it open office hours where I actually review deals and we've got a lot of students on right now. And uh, my goal is to answer questions, review deals like actual deals and show you what would I offer um, and answer the questions you have. If we have time, I like to do some role playing where we pretend to be, that sounds weird, I know. Um, it just reminds me of uh, a stupid show, House of Cards. Um, come on, Joe, get your mind out of the gutter. Um, so, but when I'm talking about role playing, I'm talking about practicing talking to sellers where I'm the seller, you're the buyer and just practicing because here's the thing. Um, you will do more deals, the more sellers you talk to. I know one of the things that attracts a lot of people to flipping vacant land, the way I teach it and the way I do it is you don't have to talk to sellers that much. Like you don't talk to them until after you send them a contract and only then if they accept your offer or are maybe in the ballpark of the offer that you're sending them, right? So in a, in a lot of ways that helps because, yeah, you got a full-time job, maybe English is your second language and you're like, I don't want to talk to sellers unless they already are motivated. Oh, that's awesome. And you can do a lot of deals that way. But I'm here to tell you, you will do more deals if you actually, before you send them an offer, answer the phone when they call or call them back right away and ask them questions about the deal. So what I'm going to do here is hopefully, and I'm getting comments in the Zoom from uh, students that, yeah, let's do role playing. It's fun. I get a lot of great feedback when we practice talking to sellers. And this is something I encourage you guys to do as well, practicing as much as you can, maybe with your kids or your friends or your spouse, practicing being the investor or the seller or the buyer on the phone. Okay. Now, uh, somebody submitted a couple deals here for me to review, and I'm going to do that right now. And if you are watching this on um, Zoom right now, um, please go ahead and feel free to submit your deal. Give me an address, parcel ID, County, you've got to have the county and the state. It's funny. There's, no, it's not funny. It's annoying. I have a place on my form where you guys can submit deals and you either don't give me the county or you don't give me the state. And it says right there, give me the county or the state where the property is located. So please do that. Don't make me work any harder than I have to, to figure out where your property is. You got to tell me where it is, right? So give me the county and the state where the property is. Okay, that'll just help make this everything, you know, make it easier for everybody. This is a deal from uh, Mi Ren, Mi Ren. And this is a, a property in Brunswick County. I don't know which state it is. Um, so I don't know what to do. I'm going to Google Brunswick County and see if it tells me which state it's in. Um, is it in North Carolina? I think it is. I think it is North Carolina. Oh, good. Okay, it is. I was wondering if it was in Delaware because isn't Wilmington in Delaware and it's right, this property is right next to Wilmington. Is Wilmington part of Delaware? Just curious. I don't know. All right. So let me, uh, let me pull this out here. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And if you can, please, if you're on Zoom, just confirm where they just confirm that you can see my screen here. Cool. All right. So um, Mirren, Mirren gave me the GPS coordinates for this property. And uh, let's zoom out a little bit to see where it is. There's Wilmington. I think that's Wilmington, Delaware, right? Oh, maybe it's not. No, Delaware's way up here. Delaware? Delaware is up there by Delaware. All right, never mind. This is obviously North Carolina. It helps to zoom out a little bit, doesn't it? Um, there's the Wilmington in Delaware. Is that Wilmington, New Jersey? Or is that Wilmington, uh, uh, Pennsylvania? I don't know. But whatever, Joe. Just start looking at this. All right, let's look at this deal. So this is um, 
what county again? This is, uh, hold on a second here. Let me look at the details. This is Brunswick County. Oh, I got too many tabs open. Let me move this over here. Okay. Let me move this up there. Move this down there. This deal is in um, Brunswick County. Let me look at Landwatch. I, I'm curious to know, Mirren, um, why you picked Brunswick County. All right. It's in North Carolina. So let's, I'm going to Landwatch here. I'm looking at North Carolina. Typically the way I like to do it, oh, that's why it's number one. Boom, this is a really active county. I'm looking for cheaper recreational property. I want to see where all the activity is. So I like to look for properties maybe under 150 grand on um, at Landwatch. Landwatch is owned by land.com and uh, it's the biggest, pop, most popular website where properties are advertising in, right? And then uh, I want... I don't want the little quarter acre lots. I want looking for like maybe one to 20 acre lots. Now you can make money on the quarter acre lots, but I like more rural recreational vacant land that you can do something with instead of just build a house. All right. So when I excluded, remember Brunswick was number one, but then when I added a one to 20 acres, Brunswick dropped off the list here. Why is that? probably because most of the properties in Brunswick County, see now it's way down here with only 36 listings, where Jackson County, Clay County, Cherokee, Ash, Rutherford, Macon, McDowell, these are the counties that have more larger recreational properties. See, we like to target cheap properties that we can sell to people who want to go camping, ride their four-wheelers, shoot their guns, go hunting, you know, just a place where they can get off the grid. Generally speaking, I mean, you can still flip houses that are quarter acres, but I'm, I'm guessing, I'm assuming that Brunswick has a lot of smaller properties. And I'm also assuming um, it's since it's closer to Wilmington, maybe it's a suburb. I don't know how big Wilmington is. Maybe it's a small little town. Maybe it's a vacation area. A lot of people go here for vacation, hang out, go to the beach. I don't know. But isn't that interesting here? Looking at the the stats now, let's look at let's look at Zillow real quick. I'm just doing this to get a feel for how competitive this county is, how much activity is happening here, right? So I'm going to go to Zillow and I'm going to do a search for um, Brunswick County, North Carolina, Brunswick County. Cool. And I'm looking at solds. I'm looking at land. And here I'm going to scroll down. I'm not doing any light, lot size for now. Let's just keep lot size. Um, no min, no max. And sold in the last 90 days. Let's do 90 days. Oh, I like this. I like Brunswick County. Look, 511 results, right? But I'm going to guess that a lot of these properties, you know, especially here along the coast, are. Um, little smaller quarter acre lots, right? So if I go to lot size minimum one acre, how many how many is it going to drop it down to? 206. All right, so I like Brunswick County. A lot of activity here, right? Um, yeah, this is cool. Now let's sort this low to high. You can see kind of what is selling here. 0.4 acres for 500. Sometimes those are the, that's the down payment that they're advertising. That's not the price. It might just be the down payment. Um, and these are the lowest. This is, these are the prices that investors are buying these things at. Okay. Usually but if you scroll down, you can see a lot of these properties are selling for over five grand. Now, 10,000, that's about a quarter acre, isn't it? One acre is 43,000 square feet. So 10,000 square feet is a quarter acre. Yeah, cool. All right. So we'll be coming back here to Zillow to kind of get some comps in just a minute. Now, this property that uh, Mirren is um, uh, got, she, she uh, got a lead from this property. Now, let me open that up here real quick. Let me close my 500 other Chrome windows. 
so I can make sure I am looking in the right spot. Okay. Property parcel ID. I have the parcel ID. Let's look that up. It is a 7.89 acres. I really like MapRite for this stuff. This property, again, 7.89 acres. I'll show you why I like MapRite. And I think why this is going to be important that we look at this property. Because if you zoom in, look, notice there's a creek there. Okay. Now, how close is this property to the creek? Is it in a flood zone? What percent of the property is in the flood zone? The other thing we're looking at on a satellite view, if we zoom in, it looks like maybe it's a dry, dry creek bed. Maybe it only has water in it during the spring or during heavy rains. What's the uh, 3D like in the area? Is this on a really slopey, hilly area? Doesn't look like it. If I'm holding the control key down, I can kind of zoom around. It looks pretty flat, right? There's some parts in Carolina where it's very um, hilly. Sometimes you got to zoom in. Is it in a is it in a gully? This this looks pretty pretty good. All right. So anyway, the other thing I like to do is here on a map. I want to see are there any street views around the area. The area. So I'm going to drag this yellow dude. And uh, see like the closest, like here's the road right here that kind of maybe you get to this property from this road. So I'm going to drop my yellow dude here. Going to kind of scroll around to see what this area is like. Okay, so there's the road you take to get to our property. And it looks like it's a gravel road. Yeah, cool. And I can tell just from the street view, this isn't the normal mountainy, hilly area of, of North Carolina. All right. Good, I'm getting kind of a feel for it. What if we bring the, uh, that's the other thing we got to look at too, on this lot, is there road access? And I'm guessing there is, because it's right there. And you got this main road, and then it looks like you got a dirt road right there. So I would, I would bet you a glass of iced tea, this has road access. Okay, uh, let's look at map right. And this, we're going to search by parcel ID. The county is Brunswick or something, isn't it? Yeah, Brunswick. Um, I copied the APN. Hopefully I got the APN number right. Mm, okay, so there's three or four different properties with the same APN. Ours is 7.89 acres, so it must be this one right here. And I was right. Hot diggity dog. All right, now you can see this tells you pretty simply, plainly, it has road access. I feel pretty good about that right there. Now, legal access, I don't know, you're going to need to ask the seller about this. You're going to have to drive through Jenny's property, uh, Melinda's property, Charles Brown's property. Shouldn't be a big deal. You just always got to check and make sure. Um, now, when I'm here, sometimes I like to look at uh, different satellite views. So I'm going to click on this property here. I'm going to X out of here. And I'm going to go to base map. And I'm going to look at hex different satellite images of this property. There's hex aerial, whatever that is. There's Google, infrared. I don't know what that means. Modern topo kind of gives you a feel for this. It slopes down pretty steep maybe over here to the creek because there's some, the, the lines are more narrow. Usually those lines are 10 feet maybe. So it drops 10, 20, maybe 30, 40 feet down into the gully. Satellite view, NAIP. Vintage topo, street view, et cetera. All right, the other thing I'm looking at, if I go here to overlays, I want to see floodplain. What's the floodplain like? Ah, oh, that's cool. It stops right about there. 
Let me zoom out. Doesn't look like a floodplain. That's good news. And there's also wetlands right here. Wetlands. So we're good. You see what I'm doing there? This is something you can get on map, right? You can go right here and you can see on this property, is it in a, uh, is it a part of it's in a wetland or a floodplain, whatever. You can see now who the owner is. Um, you can see the owner's mailing address, number of acres. And uh, sometimes you can see here on the left from county records when it was last purchased. It was last purchased in May, I'm sorry, April of 2001. All right. So Miran sent a letter to this owner who lives in Wilmington, North Carolina, not too far away. Um, sent them a letter saying, hey, do you want to sell your 7.89 acre lot? Probably is what she did. And then they said, yeah, now Mirren is either making an offer or has already made an offer. I'm not sure. Looking at the notes, she thinks we should offer 49500 and we could probably sell it for $110,000. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. First thing I want to do here is um, I want to look this property up in Zillow, but sometimes in Zillow, it's kind of hard to zoom in and find where your property is, right? So what I like to do is from Google Maps, I have a GPS, but there's no address here. It's on some kind of dirt road. But if I zoom in on Google Maps, I can maybe get the address of this property right here. Maybe this has a street address. So I'm going to right click on that house, go to what's here. And it gives me an address right there. 4808 Otis Drive, Northeast Leland, North Carolina. So I'm going to copy that address. I'm going to go to Zillow and I'm going to paste that address right here. Hit return and see what happens. Okay, good. It took me right there to that property. <clears throat> I can see they, they estimate that house and the land is worth about 136,000. Now I'm going to close X. I'm going to X out of this. And you can see now it brought me right to that property. If I scroll over, my property I'm looking at is right here. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Let's zoom in again, actually. So this is my property. I'm going to click remove boundary. I want my property that I'm analyzing to be at the center of the map. Now I'm going to start zooming out. Now, when I'm looking for comps, I can zoom in and out to get more or less comps. Okay. So my property now in Zillow is in the center of the map. Ours is 7.89 acres. So in Zillow, I'm going to start setting up some filters here. I'm going to say, all right, show me all of the five to 10 acre properties that's sold. I want to do six, let's do six months. If we need more comps, maybe we'll go to 12 months. Click apply. There's no matching results. I'm going to zoom out. Still none, zoom out. Still none, zoom out again. Still none, zoom out again. Still none, zoom out again. And there's one property right there that sold. Way, it's here over here in Wilmington. It sold for $275,000. Um, so let's, I want to see what's, what has sold in the last year. Now we have 11 results. Now you can see there's not dots. That sometimes you don't see the dots where the property is, but you can kind of see. Um, so this was 8.9 acres, real similar size. It sold for 17 grand back in August. So that was four or five months ago, right? 75 grand. This might be an outlier. That's something's going on there. But you can see some properties sold here for these prices. Um, let's zoom in again. Now we're going back a year. And if I'm zooming in again, our property is in the center of this map. There's George Brown Branch. Zoom out again, zoom out again, zoom out again, zoom out again. All right, I got 11 comps here. Now there's some real expensive ones, 750 grand, 537, 430, 275, 250. I'm going to filter out the comps that are above um, 
two hundred thousand dollars. Because I don't think this property is going to be anywhere near near two hundred thousand. These two hundred thousand dollars pluses are you know they're in the residential neighborhoods. They're along the highways. They're in more commercial areas, maybe industrial. So I'm going to exclude all the ones that are over two hundred grand. All right. I have six comps. If I want more, I can zoom out a little more, but I'm getting a little uncomfortable zooming out that far. But when I zoom out more, now I have 33 results. And like this property way up here, sold for 19,500. Is there much of a difference between that property, which is right here? This one sold for 19 grand. Mine is right here. I don't know how far that is, but I think that might be a good comp, right? 19,000. At least when I'm talking to the seller, I might ask them, hey, listen, I see this property up here, similar area as yours. Maybe it's further away from Wilmington. I don't know, but I'm just asking the question. It sold five months ago for $19,448. Why is yours so much better, nicer? All right, so while I'm looking at this, I'm going to also switch to actives. Now, when you switch to for, for active sales, you need to also make sure you're changing days on Zillow to any. All right. Now I have eight comps here sorted from low to high. This is my competition. So this property, which I don't know where it is. Is it this one? Is it this one? Don't know. It's not pinned on the map, but wherever it is, why would somebody want to pay a hundred grand for my property? That's two acres bigger, let's say, or one and a half acres bigger when they can buy this one. That's a little smaller for 40 grand. Why would they want to buy mine for a hundred when they can buy this for 67 grand? So this is your competition. And this one has been on Zillow for 572 days. All right, there's a fancy little tool here that I use a lot from Pebble. It's called the, um, I call it a doohickey. And when you click this, first of all, with this, it's a Chrome extension called from Pebble, REI.com. It's free. You need to scroll down the page to load up all of these properties. Then you click on the doohickey here and you clear all, and then you save all. What it does is it just went and scraped all the properties on this screen. And it gives you right here on a little table the acres, the price, the price per acre. And I might go through here and delete some of the big outliers, but it tells me that the median price per acre is 21,696 and the average price per acre is 19,244. Now these are actives. So I'm just going to write down, the, I usually go with the lower of the two, the lower of the average or the median. So I'm going to write down on my paper, active, pebble, is 19244 per acre. All right. Now I'm going to go back here and switch to solds. I have 103 results, too many. Oh, but remember, I changed, I have to change my days on Zillow. Let's change it back to six months. Now I have nine of them. This is sorted low to high. I'm going to scroll down to capture all of them. I'm going to do the the pebble doohickey here, clear all, save all. Now I've got, these are solds. So I'm writing this down, sold pebble. The lowest is 14,761 per acre. So I have two different average or median price per acres. One is 14,700 and one is 19,200. All right. And so looking at this, I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm going to probably, I always offer, if it's a, um, if it's a more premium property, I'm offering maybe 40 to 50%, 40% of what I think I can sell it for. If it's a cheaper property, I'm offering more like 25% of what I think I can sell it for. Uh, this is, these aren't these little cheap lots either. I'm probably going to offer I'm going to do, um, instead of 25%, I'm going to do 35% on this one, okay? 
And so this property we're looking at again is a 7.89 acres, okay? So I'm gonna do 7.89 times. I should have done this in a spreadsheet. In fact, let's just do that real quick here. I think this might help y'all. Uh, drive, I use Google Sheets a lot. New spreadsheet. Okay, so the Pebble doohickey for actives, the average, the, the, the price per acre was 19244 okay? And for solds, it was 14761 Which number am I going to use? Eh, let's pick something in the middle. I'm just going to pick something in the middle. You know what? Actually, oh, okay, yeah, let's just do that. So I'll do the average of the two. I got 17,000. All right. Now my offer is going to be 35%, right? I'm going to just cut that and put it there. So my offer price is going to be 17,000 times 35%. I'm going to offer $5,951 an acre. You guys see my screen okay? Now my property that we're looking at here is, why do I always forget this? 7.89 acres. Let me write that down. Oh, I did write it down. 7.89 acres. 7.89. All right. So my offer number one is going to be 5951 times 7.89. My initial offer is going to be about 46,952. Now, if I offer 46,952, I'm going to have to add in um, I'm going to sell it for, I don't know, let's say I sell it for um, sale price. I'm going to bump it up. I'm going to sell it for 25 grand more. I'm just thinking that simple numbers right now equals that plus 25,000. So I'm going to list it for maybe 79,000, 71,952. Let's make that a little bigger. Let's, let's say I'm going to sell it for, for 76,952. Now I'm going to have, Realtors commissions, right? And I'm going to pay about 8% realtor commissions, maybe 6%. So usually pay a little bit more with land. So it's all negotiable. So that's going to be equals negative that times. I'm going to pay about six grand in commissions. And I'm also going to have closing costs of, let's just say negative $2,000. Okay. So my net. Profit, if I wholesale this deal, is going to be 76952 minus realtor commissions, minus my closing costs, minus what I paid for the property. So I, my net wholesale profit will be about 21 grand. Better than a, a kick in the, you know what? I can handle that. That's pretty good. All right. So here's the question then, can I sell this property? See, my, my minimum profit target is 20 grand on a bigger deal like this. A smaller deal, my, my, uh, my profit, minimum profit might be 10 grand. So I'm wanting to make at least 20 grand on this deal. That's what I'm kind of shooting for. Now you notice I'm all, oh, what if I had a, what if I had to pay a private real, uh, investor? Ooh, you need to factor in these costs, don't you? Oh. Private investor interest. Because a lot of you guys, you don't want to use your own money. You don't, maybe you don't have your own money. Well, you're, if you're going to offer 46 grand, usually what I do is I pay my private investors eight to 10%. No matter how, if I borrow it for a month, three months, six months, or 12 months, I'm going to pay them eight to 10% a year on their money. So let's say you do, you pay a private investor 8%. Okay. I'm going to, and, and, you're going to borrow $46,000 on this property that's worth about $76,000. What's the loan to value of that? It's going to be pretty good. So your, your, your private investor is in a real safe spot. You're at 61% loan to value. That's nice. That's good. So if I'm going to, but I'm going to pay 8% interest equals negative 8% times the amount of money that I'm borrowing. 
it's going to be about that. I might also borrow money from closing costs, but anyway, um, I'm going to pay about $3,700 in interest. So don't forget that, that bad boy. So my profit on this deal, using somebody else's money, using a title company to close the deal, using a realtor to do all the work of selling it for me, I'm still going to net 18 grand. That's bare bones minimum. That's the, But that's net, net, net. That's pretty good, isn't it? All right. So if I offer 46, and let me highlight this in yellow. Maybe. There we go. If I offer 46,952, can I sell it for 76,952? Let's look at the competition. What is the competition showing me, all right? Let's switch here from solds to actives. Don't forget to change the days on Zillow to any when you're looking at actives. Well, hmm. Again, I'm going to sell mine for $76,000, $77,000, but why would somebody want to buy mine for $77,000 or whatever when they can buy this one for it's just uh, an acre smaller for forty? dollars This one they can buy that's an acre smaller for sixty-seven. dollars I don't know, but there's also some here. You know what I'm thinking? This is definitely something where if I make an offer and the seller accepts it, one of the first people that I'm going to call are some local realtors in this area, right? How do you find those local realtors? You just look at these listings here. Call this guy. Hey, this is like, um, why haven't you sold this property yet? Got good road access. It's got a mailbox. Uh, Polly Floyd, Berkshire Hathaway. I would also call this realtor. Art Ricks, same brokerage. Why isn't this property sold yet? I've got a property. I'm thinking I want to sell it. Um, what price would I need to price it at to sell it quickly within one or two months? I notice they're paying a buyer's agency fee, 5%, which means they're probably making 5%. So they're paying 10% commissions on this deal here. This one's been on Zillow for um, less than a month. Okay, let's uh, let's also quickly look here at solds real quick. I want to see these are some agents that you better call. Let's look again. Last twelve months, call these agents like this one. So if it's if this was sold by an agent, and it doesn't look like it was, this one probably was. You can see the MLS sign on the on the picture there. Call this agent. Bobby B. Again, Berkshire Hathaway is a big broker there that does a lot of these deals. And look at this. This is cool. Samantha Muse from Premier Realty Group. When you, if the seller accepts your offer, you need to call these realtors first thing and ask them, hey, I don't have an agent representing me yet. Um, I've got a property that I'm thinking about buying, but I'm going to turn around and resell it. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to sell it for cash or if I'm going to sell it for with owner financing. But what uh, I'm looking for a realtor to help me represent me, maybe. Um, what do you think I could sell this property for? And I'd be honest with them. I tell them I'm buying it for forty six thousand. Could I sell it for at least seventy five? Get their feedback, and usually they'll tell you, "Yeah, you know, you could probably get seventy to ninety for it." You know, if you really want to sell it quickly, though, you should probably list it for fifty. Whatever you want to get that feedback from them. So I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air. I don't know what to offer yet. Is this going to work or not? Could I sell it for 76? Kind of depends on if it's in a good area. These things are smaller and they sold for 75 grand, 90 grand, 90 grand. That's pretty good. But when I look at actives, this is what makes me nervous. And this is why comping vacant land is so much harder in some ways than houses. You just, it's harder to get comps. Zoom out. You know, why would they want to buy mine for seventy-seven thousand when they could buy this one for forty, this one for sixty-seven? 
So I'd want to know more about these. All right, so I'm going to show you another place I like to go look, and that's priced. Um, by the way, we can also look at, let me just show you land.com. Our property zip code is uh, 28451. 28451. It's going to get us in the area. Let's view map. You can see it down here. You got to zoom in. We're going to just try to center our property in the map. Okay. I'm going to do acres. Let's do again five. Oops. Five to 10 acres. Thank you, land.com, for zooming me out again to the whole United States. Center that. More filters. Includes residents. No. Five to 10 acres. Apply filters. Nothing. Except this one. Hmm. Redo search here. Got to zoom out quite a bit. Let's sort this low to high. Ten acres for thirty grand, fifty-five, seventy-five. Let's set the price to max two fifty. Cool. All right. Now you can also do the uh, pebble doohickey here also. Clear all, save all. And we're getting about, you can see it has the properties here. We're at about 19361 median price per acre. You know, before, remember, I was making my offer at 35%. I'm just, I'm wondering if I should do 25%. That's kind of where I'm leaning more. Instead of offering 46 grand, I'm kind of leaning towards doing 25% offering 33 grand. All right, one more thing I wanted to show you, and that's looking here at land.com. Um, and we could also look at, we can add solds in here if we want. That doesn't mean it's sold from county records. These are just solds that were marked as sold in land.com. We get a lot more comps here. Um, we can zoom in a little bit maybe. Make sure our property is centered. Redo search here. All right, then we can do the pebble doohickey again. Clear all, save all. And look at this, median price per acre is 10 grand now. Okay, let's look at priced. Priced has this thing called comp report. And I really like this, especially in areas where it's hard to get comps. By the way, somebody was asking me earlier, um, is MapRite free? And it's not. Priced is not free either. MapRite um, costs, I think I'm paying 19 or 20, 20 bucks a month, maybe. MapRite. Um, and then priced is 500 bucks a year. You don't have to pay for, you don't have to pay for priced. And remember our uh, APN number. All right. What's going on here is it's creating a comp report and it's going to give me a PDF, hopefully, if I get the APN number right. And it's going to give me a bunch of comps. It's going to show me active comps that are nearby, sold comps that are nearby. They're not always recent comps. I mean, they could be from a while ago, but it's just a good general idea. All right, so just downloaded it and it gave me a KML file and a PDF file. If I click on the KML file, which is fascinating, it opens up Google Earth and I'll share my new screen here with Google Earth in a minute. Right now, actually. All right, it's zooming into the property. 
And what it just done did there is it gives me now, my property is uh, somewhere. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Property that we're looking at is that green right there, okay? This is what priced is giving me for comps. The yellows are sold comps. The reds are for sale comps. So you can actually, these are similar size. Well, sort of, there's some two acre properties there. All right, well, let's look at what price is now showing me in the uh, PDF report. And I'm going to share that with you here. So this is a, this is the report that price gives me. It's a comp report. So let's look at the information here. There's the information on the owner. Um, by the way, I'd be curious if, is this the same County? So the owner lives in Wilmington, North Carolina. Remember when we pull lists of sellers, we typically will say the owner has to live outside of the County. And if this property is in the same County where the owner lives, it's okay, but the chances of them being motivated to sell it at a huge discount are just smaller when they live close to it. So whenever I'm pulling a list of mail, I always want to make sure that when it says owner location, it's exclude in county, which means exclude the people who live in that same county. So I'm just curious, um, Mirren, when you pulled this list, if you did that or not. Not a big deal. So this is a pricing analysis breakdown. It shows me the county price, the city price, geo-adjusted price, average price. So their price is saying it's worth about 126 grand. Always take this stuff with a grain of salt. If they think it's worth 126, you could okay, go go to Zillow and say, "All right, can I sell this thing for 126?" I don't know. This is my, there's four properties that are cheaper, but maybe I can. There's some more expensive here. And again, I'm also ca capping this at 200 grand. There's some properties here that are for sale for 425 and 465. Those are closer to the city. All right. Anyway, let's look at this comp report. Uh, here's the comp overview. I wanted to take you to here. Here's the for sale comps. And this is cool, but what's I, sometimes this gets it right. Sometimes it doesn't. It's giving me two acre properties here, two, three. I'm not too excited about that. An 18 acre property, but okay, whatever. These, these are for sale comps and you can go in here and you can click on these links and see them. Now they're giving me a comp here. That's 690,000. This is one of the drawbacks of having, you know, a software that gives you comps. Um, Cause we're, we got ranges here from $2,500 an acre to $76,000 an acre. Those aren't comparables. Those are completely different. The next page is sold comps. You can also see it gives you the distance here. So these are all within five or six miles. Gives you, so you could click on one of these things, for example, this property, you know, that's two acres. Let's look at uh, this 10 acre property, go to Zillow. This 10 acre property sold for 72,500. back uh, 10 months ago. So that's probably a decent comp, right? I'm going to need to sell mine for 70. So if I offer 33, I can try to sell it for 63. All right, back to this comp report. Where'd it go? Oh, got to go back here. Go back here. <clears throat> Let's go to the next page. This is going to give me a slope overview. So 98% of the property is in a buildable area. That's good. 53% is flat. 36% is gentle slope. Septic breakdown, if it's available, it kind of gives you 
septic absorption limitation. I don't know how they get that information. I don't know. But what I want to show you here is the offer price index. All right. So there's price does county offer, city offer, and geo adjusted offer. That's basically county offer is based on all the comps in the entire county. This is based on the city, the mailing address of the property. Um, and this is geo, just, geo adjusted. That's our algorithm. So if I'm going to offer 30%, I'm going to either offer 35 grand, 30 grand, or 37 grand. And when I have a choice, I'm going to go with the lower of the three. So they're telling me here I should offer 30,245. If I'm going to be offering 40%, I'm going to offer about 40,325. If you feel like you can sell it for 100 grand and you want to do, you know, never offer more than 50% on a vacant piece of vacant land. If it's worth more, you can offer more, but never more than 50%. I'm going to be more at the 30 to 40% range. I'm just looking at this thinking I'm going to offer and if I'm looking at two or three different numbers, I'm going to always go with the lower one 90% of the time. So right now I'm thinking I'm going to offer 30,245. Okay. So Mirren did say I, I did exclude in county owners when I pulled the list. Okay. That's cool. Sometimes they sneak in and maybe that Wilmington is in a different county. I don't know. Okay, um, so back to the lead here that Mirren submitted. She said she could sell it for 110, and so she's going to offer 49,500. Mirren, I'm just curious, have you already sent the offer? Have they accepted it? I'm looking at the notes here, and I don't. So she's not sent the offer yet. Mirren, I think your offer 49,500 is a little too high, personally. And this might also be a good deal, Mirren, to actually call the seller and talk to them. And by the way, who would like to do a role play right now with me? If you want to do a role play with me, I want you to raise your hands. And let's do a role play on this actual deal. Uh, in the Zoom right now, raise your hand. If you go to reactions or type in me, 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 in the chat. <clears throat> but if you go in Zoom to reactions and raise your hand. Okay, Mirren wants to do it. All right, Mirren, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Joe, how are you? Awesome, you? I'm doing well, thank you. Am I pronouncing your name right, Mirren? Yes, you are. Oh, good. Okay. Do you want to practice role play on this one? Sure. All right, so you're going to be the seller and I'm going to be the buyer the investor okay. buyer. Okay. And I'm going to open up my script here and I'll share my script with you guys so you can see it. Um, now the, you know, normally Miran, you know, I, kind of depends on how busy I am, what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I just send the offer and I talk to them only after they get the offer, if they're somewhat interested. Um, but on the bigger deals like this, it's, it's probably more important to talk to them. Now, when I say bigger deal, um, for me, a bigger deal is anything that I'm that I can sell for more than fifty grand. Um, but in those kind of quote unquote bigger deals, it's it's more important to talk to the sellers if you can. So I was going to um, call the sellers once. Okay, we good. finish this call so I could get a better idea of, of you know if it has road access and all those other questions that we're supposed to ask. So Excellent. I just kind of okay. wanted to know if it was a good starting point, but um, I am going to be talking to all the sellers. So. All right. Now, let me say this too, as I open up the script here. Um, I spent a lot of time analyzing that deal. It should not take you that long, right? Um, if, if anything, just pull up that comp report from Price and just start from there. Um, but I was going through it really long because I was trying to explain it and show you and teach you what I would do. But when you're first looking at these things and pricing them, you should be able to come up with a ballpark number of where you kind of need to be within five to 10 minutes. Okay. 
Um, but let's look at the script. Okay. So I'm going to call you, you're going to be the owner um, and be nice or be mean, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hey, is this Miran? This is she. Hey, this is Joe. And I, I got your voicemail. You called me earlier today about your, um, what is a 7.89 acre property in um, what was the County again? Brunswick, Brunswick, mm -hmm. Brunswick County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Thanks for calling oh, me back. Yeah, good. I, di I didn't catch you in the middle of anything, did I? No, I'm good. Good. All right. Hey, um, listen, I got your voicemail. I'm looking to buy some more land in the area today. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about the property to see if it would be something I'd be interested in? No, go ahead. Awesome. Okay, cool. After I ask you some questions, I'm going to do some research. I'm going to send you an offer. Is that okay? Perfect. Awesome. All right. So I got your name and phone number here. Um, this is Brunswick County, right? And the uh, APN... Parcel ID I have here is seven nine six three four. It's good. It's about it's what seven point eight nine acres, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And are there utilities on the property? No. Okay, no utilities. Uh, what's the road access like? I saw on on the Google Maps there was it's kind of off road. Maybe is that a dirt road? You know what? Uh, I inherited the property, so I've actually never been to it before. Okay. So I'm not quite sure. Okay, you inherited. It. Was it? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, was it your your parents or? My grandparents. Okay. All right. Um, do you do you know anything about the road? It looks like it cuts through a couple different people's properties. Um, you know if it's okay to drive through their properties to get to yours? You know, I have no idea. Okay. All right. No big no big deal. Um, let me ask you some more questions here. The um you know if it's part of an HOA, are there any restrictions? No, no HOAs. Off role play. That's really awesome. That is not in an HOA, um, if that's true. Because I have no idea. <laughs> well, you're, you're, I bet you you're right. It's probably not in an HOA, just looking at the area. But uh, non-HOA is great because that means I can sell it for a higher price because there's no restrictions. Like anybody can go there and build a tiny house, as long as it meets county code and all of that. But there's not, they can go camping, hunting. So it's easier to sell properties with no restrictions on it. All right. Anyway, back to role play. Cool, Miran. Thanks. Um, do you know if the taxes are current? Yeah, they are. Okay, cool. Um, and the, the you're the owner on record, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So off role play, it's like they inherited the property. Is it's I'm trying to figure out is who's the actual owner on title, and is that the person I'm talking to? Um, then because if it's in probate right now, that that changes everything because. That's that's really hard to get out of probate. All right. So anyway, she owns the property. She's on the title. Uh, cool. Is it? Do you know if it's free and clear? Is there a mortgage on the property? It's free and clear. Okay. Cool. And is it currently listed with an agent? It is not. Okay. Um, do you have any other properties you're looking to sell right now, or is this it? Um, that's it. Okay. Cool. Is there anything else about the property I need to know about? I don't believe so. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. I'm looking at the property here on, on the maps, Google maps right now. Looks like a nice house. I mean, nice. <laughs> sorry. It looks like a nice property. Um, why, why do you even want to sell it? Um, like I said, I, I just inherited it. So I have no idea to, what to even do with it. And, okay. um, you know, I'm just don't want to pay the taxes for something that I'm not really going to use. Yeah. But you're, you're not in a hurry to sell it, right? No, not really. Yeah. Huh? When were you hoping to be able to sell it? How quickly did you want to sell it? I guess it just de depends on what kind of offer I get. Yeah. Have you thought about just listing it with an agent? I'm not a realtor, by the way, but why don't you just sell it with a realtor? I believe they charge like anywhere between eight and 10%. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you then what's more important to you? Is it, is it more important for you to sell it for as high of a price as possible or to sell it as quickly as possible? High as the price is possible. Ah, okay. Well, I'll just tell you this. I, I'm not a retail buyer. I'm not going to give you the highest price. You know, if you wanted to sell it for as much as possible, I'd probably suggest listing it with a realtor. Okay. But uh, let me ask you some more questions then. What do you think the property is worth right now, Mirren? Uh, I was just looking, looking around. I think I could probably sell it for like around 100, 110 maybe. Okay, 100 and 110. How'd you arrive at that number? 
just looking at, at what's sold on, on Zillow that okay. was comparable to, to, to my property. All right. So you think that's a pretty fair price? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good, good. I can I can tell you this just to be honest with you, and I don't want to waste your time. I, I, I'm not going to be anywhere near that price. Um, but let me ask you something, though. If I could pay you cash, you don't have to pay any realtor commissions. I could close quickly. You don't have to pay any closing costs. You don't have to pay any realtor commissions. What would be the best price you would consider? Um, I'd probably say 75000 75000 mm -hmm. mm. Huh. Boy. Is that the best you can do? Yeah. Okay. But l l let me just ask you then. If I brought you a suitcase full of cash today for 60 grand, would you not take it? I mean, I might take it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you know, I'm just trying to get to just get an idea for where your range is. What's the absolute lowest you could go? So you you might take a sixty thousand dollar offer, maybe if we could get this deal done today. Maybe. Okay, again, I don't know if I can make that work. I kind of need to sharpen my pencil and look at some things, but that's the lowest you'd go. Um, well, listen, let me uh, let me do some research, um, and and can I get your email address here so I can send you an offer? Sure. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, listen, one one final question, Mirren. Um, I don't know if I can make the numbers work, but if we could agree on the numbers, could we actually do a deal today? Could we sign a contract today? Absolutely. Okay. All right, cool. Well, let me do some research and I'll get back to you, all right? Okay, sounds good, John. Thank you. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. So that's my script. I think, you know, what would you guys have done differently? I'd be curious. Mirren, do you think... Um, I said something out of bounds or I should have said something differently or what do you think? Uh, no, I, I mean, I think it was a good idea to kind of determine of where they're at. Um, you know, the, the, the 60,000 cash kind of was a, as you were asking me, I was like, well, yeah, I would take 60,000 if you just came to me with $60,000, but I know my property's worth more. Right. So, well, you know what, you know as, what I mean? as I, as I said that, I remembered, oh, I was going to offer like 30,000. So, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know why I said 60. Um, so I kind of stuck my foot in my mouth there, but I probably should have said, I know, Mirren, that you're probably going to be, let's go back to the role play here. Mirren, you, you probably are not going to like this at all. And, and believe me, I probably wouldn't either if I were you. But if I could bring you a suitcase full of cash for $30,000 today, would you take it? For this property? Yeah, yeah, for this property. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, for this property. Probably not. Okay. Um, let, me, let me ask you one more question then. If I could maybe get you something closer to the price that you want, you wouldn't consider maybe doing some seller financing, something like that, would you? I would. I'm sorry? I would. Oh, you yes. would? Okay. All right. Well, listen, let me, let me put together some numbers and um, I'll send you something to look at here. I got your email address. Um, I will text you and email you when I get something together. Is that all right? Sounds great. Okay, good. So you notice what I did. I, I, we were like way far apart. You said the lowest you'd go was 60. I was thinking 30. Um, I'm playing kind of the reluctant buyer a little bit. I'm trying to like talk you out of selling it. I'm trying to say, Hey, you should list it with an agent. If you want to get your highest price, you're obviously not in a hurry to sell it. So that's the tricky thing about this, right? Like it's hard to get big fat discounts from sellers who aren't motivated and you're not in a hurry to sell it, but you might take the price that you want a higher price than I'm willing to pay with cash. If you would carry back some financing, seller financing. So that might be an option, right? Maybe I could buy it with seller financing for 60 grand if I do zero down and principal only payments. And then I turn around and sell it for 80 grand to a buyer for a 10% uh, a interest for 10 years. That's called arbitrage, you know, where I could, I'm paying you principal only payments of, I don't know, just out of my head, 300 bucks a month, 400 bucks a month but I'm collecting 800 bucks a month from somebody else. I'm getting some cash flow, and I'm paying you off 
as quick as possible. So that's kind of something else I talk about in the course a little bit, but you could, um, if you're really far apart in price, there's two things you guys can do. You can send a, um, a cash offer um, or, and, or you could send an offer for cash and for owner financing, give them some choices, give them some options. Um, so Joe, Joe, would yeah. you, um, at that 30,000 price point or 31,000, wherever, we, wherever you decided it was going to be at, is that something that you would today yourself make an offer to the seller for? Um, I, I would probably, my offer would be about 30 grand based on the numbers we were looking at. Is you know, it something? So, so if I were to submit, if I were to say, okay, I'll offer thirty thousand, they accept it. Do you think that'd be a pretty safe bet in terms of me being able to to put it back on the market? Yeah, I think so. Because then you you'd put it on the market for sixty five. Mm -hmm. First thing I would do is I'd call you know three or four realtors in the area, and uh, I would I would want to put it on the market for maybe sixty three thousand, sixty five thousand. When I, my goal, when I put it on the, on the market, I want it to sell quickly. If I'm not getting a ton of calls in the first two or three weeks, then I'm, I'm asking way too high. One of the mistakes I see a lot of land investors make is trying to get the most highest price possible. And it's vacant land is different than houses. Maybe you could get away with that with, with a, with a house, but your pool of buyers is just a little bit, it's a, it's a lot smaller for vacant land. So I want to be aggressive right out of the gate. I want to price mine. I want to be the best property at the cheapest price. All right. So if I'm going to sell it quickly, is 65 grand a good price to sell it quickly for? And that a realtor is going to tell you that who's more familiar with the area. So if 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 it is, if I can sell it in one, two, you know, at the most three months for 65 grand, then 33 grand. 30 grand, 35 grand in that range is a good, is a good amount. I, you know, I've got 8% covered for commissions, two grand for closing costs. I'm paying a private investor, um, you know, uh, 8% um, for holding their money for a couple, three months. Yeah. Is this a deal that um, you'd be interested in partnering on? Is this like a, in terms of what we just looked at, this makes sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, I would consider partnering on this deal. Cool. Um, and the, as those of you watching right now on Facebook or YouTube, I only partner with students on deals and Mirren is a student. So I partner with students on deals. And, and depending on the deal, Mirren, um, if we do all of the work of bringing the money, um, advertising and marketing the deal, finding the realtors, taking the pictures of drone footage, closing on the deal, getting the private money, all of that stuff that we do with it, we, 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 some, it's negotiable, but it's, it's usually 75, 25 split. So you get 25 to 35% of the net profit. Um, and we get the rest. Now the, the there's other sources. And in the course, I give you about five or six different funding companies that might fund this deal for you. Now they're going to make you do most of the work of advertising it and selling it. So I'm not your only option. If you want to partner with somebody else on this deal, there are funding companies that I give in the course that you could um, give this deal to them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Good. Oh, right, well, we need to wrap this up. Miran, do you have any other questions? Um, I actually submitted that other one to you as well. It's also in Brunswick County. Um, yes. Um, I'm kind of running out of time, but let's look at it real quick. And maybe... Um, Maybe I can come up with something real quick on that. Okay, let me. Sure. So this guy actually, he actually came back to me and he said, I contacted him about the, the first parcel that I sent you. And then he texted me back saying that he also has the other one that's neighboring right next ne next to it. And he wants to sell both. He's had it for like since the 7th. Oh, so this is a property right next to this one we were just looking at. Is that right? No, no. It's, it's, it's also in Brunswick County, but it's a different, it's not next to it. He has two props two parcels that ah, he so wants this, to sell. Yeah. Okay. And this one let's, does have road access. Let's look at this one real quick. Um, I'll share my screen here. Same owner. <clears throat> so you gave me the GPS coordinates and I'm zooming in here. Um, well, first of all, this is Wilmington here. Your The other property we were looking at, it was up here somewhere. Correct. 
Mm -hmm. This one's down here. Yeah, this one's closer to that Winnebago. Is is Wilmington kind of like a um, a beach vacation it area is. destination? Mm -hmm. It is okay. Um, because these are a little more pricey than normal properties we look at. So, if I drag the yellow dude around here, there is a, a street view map here. This is kind of what the area looks like. If we go down this dirt road, it takes us to the property. Okay, so he hasn't, has he told you what he would sell his for? Not yet. Um, so how many acres is this one? Uh, there's two parcels. The first one I believe is um, 6.48. Okay. And then the second one is 10 acres. Okay, so so there's two properties totaling. Are they next to each other? Yeah. Okay. It's right on top of each other. So there's there's 16 and a half acres. Correct. And your offer price was less than the other one we were looking at. On a oh, that, that was just big. that was just for this just for that one parcel. Ah. So the offer the price that you tell me here for 33 grand was just for the 6.4 acre or the 10 acre one. The six point. Okay. Well, yeah, these are bigger, more expensive properties. Like this is something where you're going to need to talk to the seller. I mean, you may be thinking I'm going to offer 30 and he tells you, uh, you know, if I can get 20 for it, then I'd be, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, that's just what I was thinking. Or no, no, actually that's wrong. You should say, Oh, the same thing I did before mm. <laughs> that the lowest you can go, you know? Uh, but yeah, by the way, I'm looking at some chat here in the Zoom chat. And uh, some of you are saying, yeah, you need a real estate license to wholesale deals and whatever. Here, This is why we buy the deals and we close on them. So if you actually close on them, you don't need a real estate license to do that. But let's say you do. That's why we use realtors. That's why we use realtors to sell our properties. And then it's it's a mute point. So there's definitely road access here. Um, I would do the same thing we kind of did before. Um, you know, that pebble doohickey thing, I call it. Mm -hmm. um, you're probably going to be at, you're probably going to want to offer, I'm going to guess $15,000. Well, if you take $15,000 an acre times 0.35, you're going to want to offer, let me get my calculator here. 15,000 an acre times 0.3. You're going to want to offer about 5,200 an acre. I'm going to guess. And 1,500 or 5,250 an acre times 16 acres. Did I do that right? Um, you would offer about 75, $80,000. Maybe. Um, I would pull a priced comp report. I did already. Okay. I, I sent it to you in the, in the switch. Oh, it is in there. Let's look at that mm -hmm. real quick. Um, oh, I don't see it. Did you email it to me or upload it? I uploaded it. I don't see it. Um, I'm going to message you right now in zoom chat. Can you send me the, I'm going to give you my email address. Can you email it to me sure. right now? Mm-hmm. I just sent you my email address in there. Um, you, I'm looking at your, yeah, I don't see it attached here. But um, again, when you're looking at, huh, now this is going to be interesting because price is going to give you a comp report for one of those properties. So you just kind of have to manipulate the numbers a little bit. But um, if we go back up here, Yeah, so it's going to be real similar. This is a subdivision price index. This is kind of what, what the area is, is about. Uh, actually, let's go up here to this. Nope, let's go to this. Pricing analysis breakdown. 
this is what they're saying. It's it's going to be it's going to be worth about fourteen thousand six hundred dollars an acre. And if you do thirty five percent of that, which is what is similar to what I just did on a sixteen acre property, you should offer about seventy five to eighty grand. It's kind of where what I'm thinking there. All right, let's. I'm going to go check my email real quick to see that priced report you sent me. I don't see it yet. Have you sent it, Mirren? <clears throat> I did send it. Do, 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 do. Oh, bummer. I don't see it yet. Ah, there it is. I'm going to download it. All right. I'm going to share my, you got, you should see it here. Do you see it, Mirren? I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is for the 6.4 acre right. one. So we'll, we'll kind of maybe use a similar price. And it's almost exactly the same right there. Well, it's less. Here we go. So the way price does it, they give you county price, city price, geo adjusted price. So based on their kind of comps, they're saying it's worth about 11,483 an acre. So let's just take that number in my calculator. 11,483 an acre times 0.35 is about $4,019 an acre. I think your 16 point, 16 point four acres. So that's an offer price of about 65,900. So I had a question on that, Joe, since, since this is kind of a higher price point, that's yeah. why I was going with the, with the 45%. Um, is that, is that not accurate? Yeah, I don't I know. It, it might be, th this is again, where you're going to have yeah, to talk to some local agents, local realtors, because mm -hmm. they're going to know this area better than any of us. And they're going to be able to tell you um, what they think they could sell it quickly for. And you want to make sure they at, you ask them, I want to sell this thing in one or two months. What price do I need to price it at to sell it really quickly like that? And uh, they'll give you a range. And I always want to be conservative. So if they give me a range of like, well, you could sell it for, I don't know, 100 to 120,000. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to sell it for 100,000. In fact, I'm going to list it for 97,500. I want to get it right underneath the $100,000 mark. You want to price it aggressively. So if you list it for 90, whatever the number was I said, let's say you list it for $97,000 and you want to make at least a $20,000 wholesale fee on it, subtract your private money, subtract your realtor costs, subtract your closing costs, subtract your wholesale fee of 20 grand. So are you still going to make, so if I offered 65,900 and I sold it for, 97,000 after all of my costs, can I still make 20 grand on that? And it looks, I think you could. So you, these are the deals where you've got to talk to a local realtor um, and get their, get their opinion on, on all of this. And, and well, let me just say one more thing and we'll wrap this up here. Um, a lot of times when you're in, when you're doing land, you're, you're not going to get a good number and you got to be okay with this nebulous of, I don't know if this is a good offer or not, but I got two or three numbers here. I'm just going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with the lower one maybe. And you just don't know until you put it on the market. If you put it on the market and you're not getting any calls, it's been a month, hardly any calls at all. You offered too much. You got to go back to the seller and renegotiate a lower price. And there's nothing wrong with that. You've got three months of due diligence on this property. Okay. Um, and I would be, again, when you're talking to the realtor, you want to be honest with them and tell them, I don't own this property yet. I, I have it under contract. I'm, I'm thinking about buying it at this price. Um, I'm an investor. My goal is to flip this thing um, and uh, pay you commissions to sell it for me. But you have three months to determine whether you can actually buy it or not at that price. So the market is the one, the market will always tell you whether you're too high or too low, or if it's just right. And you need to, sometimes you just take some time for the market to tell you. If you're getting a ton of calls, well, set, maybe lower, maybe raise your price a little bit. Maybe start a bidding war with everybody that's calling. 
But if it's been three or four weeks and you've not gotten any calls at your price, you're probably offered too much. You go back to the seller, you either cancel or renegotiate. You can go back to the seller and use an option agreement. You can say, listen, Mr. Seller, I know I offered you 65 grand. I've been doing some research, talking to some realtors, looking at some comps, and I there's no way I'm going to be able to buy it at 65. But I might know somebody else who would. And uh, if you want, if it's all right with you, I'm going to give you an option agreement. So I have the option to buy it at this higher price, the 65000 with for six months. And it just gives me some time. Maybe I can find somebody else. Then you can go and do the strategy where you sell your option. You know, you probably may not get a realtor that can list it for you, or you have to get a creative realtor that will be willing to do that. But then you're kind of off the hook and you've got six months to try to find a buyer. You can sell that option to for, you know, a $10,000 assignment fee or something. Does that make sense, Miran? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Well, thanks for uh, being a good sport. You're welcome. All right, Miran. Cool. I already got to wrap this up, guys. Um, appreciate you all being on the show. If you want, hey, listen, I got something. Got something really cool here for you. If you're not a student of mine and you're watching this on the YouTubes or Facebooks or LinkedIn's and Twitter's, am I anywhere else? No, I'm trying to get on Rumble, but I'm not there yet. If you want this free contract, I know it's hard to see. There it is. Bam. This is a deal I got under contract while I was on vacation in Vail, Colorado. It's cash flowing $250 a month for five years. Our profit on this deal is going to be about $12,000. Our cash on cash return is 125%. Um, we bought this deal for $3,700 in Suwannee County, Florida. Here's, here's the deal. And we sold it for 13 grand. If you want this contract for free, just go to simplelandcontract.com, simplelandcontract.com. And you get the same contract that I use to tie up deals like that. I also have another one over here. I won't show you, but it's the same deal that we got under contract with my teenagers. My two teenage sons sent the offer for me. And uh, yeah, Dan, if you're a student, all of that, what I just showed you is in the Google Doc folder for, for students. Um, so cool. Go to simplelandcontract.com, guys. If you're not a student and you want a copy of that contract for free, after you opt in to get that contract, you'll get an invitation to watch a class. Uh, webinar on how to get my course. And in the course, I go deep dive into how to find these deals, how to negotiate the deals, how to get them under contract, how to sell them, where to get the money. Um, might even partner with you on a deal. In my program, we do a lot of done for you coaching and stuff like that. Um, yeah, cool. That's it. I got to go guys. Appreciate you all. Have a good day.